You heard what uh, Minister Cormann had to say about that. Is this a true depiction of Australia's role and response to the climate crisis? Yeah, thanks. It's good to be with you. Um, no, unfortunately not. It's, um, he's really misstating uh, what Australia is doing right now under the current uh, uh, government. Um, they're using some accounting tricks to try to claim that uh, their uh, emissions reductions in response to the Kyoto Accord 20 years ago somehow have relevance to what Australia is doing now. No, right now the, the current government is actually supporting policies that are increasing uh, the mining of coal and carbon emissions from coal. The uh, Donny coal mine will double Australia's uh, coal-based carbon emissions and Australia remains the largest exporter of coal to the rest of the world. So at a time when we need to bring carbon emissions down by a factor of two within the next 10 years to avert catastrophic warming, the current uh, Australian governmental policies are actually taking us in the wrong direction. The other thing that he said uh, during that interview was that if Australia wasn't supplying these ready markets with cleaner coal, then it would be replaced by dirtier coal. Is that how it works? Uh, no. I mean, coal, it doesn't matter how clean or how dirty it is. When you burn it, you put CO2 into the atmosphere. And, and I think that's actually a misstatement of uh, the, the coal that Australia actually is producing. Some of it is cleaner, some of it is pretty dirty. But in the end, it's a fossil fuel. It's the most carbon-intensive fossil fuel. When you burn it, you put CO2 into the atmosphere, you warm up the planet, you dry out the continents, you get the sorts of uh, mass bushfires that we're seeing here in Australia. Yeah, Professor, explain to us that. What links are you seeing between the bushfires and these extreme weather events? Yeah, so, you know, you don't need a professor <laughs> to understand uh, the, the relationship. It's not rocket science, as we say in the States. It's really basic. Um, you take unprecedented heat, you combine it with unprecedented drought, like we've seen here in southeastern Australia and New South Wales, and you get these sorts of bushfires. You get more intense, uh, more widespread, and faster spreading bushfires like the ones that have engulfed the entire continent over the last uh, month or so. Can we arrive at a time in Australia when the country simply becomes too hot or dry for humans? Uh, will we see more of, the, of these like climate refugees that we're seeing around the world? Yeah, unfortunately, we're seeing the beginning stages of that. Um, here in Australia, a, a lot of folks who've lost their homes to these bushfires uh, are being told by the insurers that uh, these, the, you know, that the, their homes built in these areas are, are no longer insurable. So they're not going to insure additional homes that are uh, built in these fire-prone areas. And more and more of the continent, of course, is becoming uh, prone to these uh, bushfires. So sort of the lack of insurability is really the first step in um, the, the lack of habitability. And so in a sense, we're seeing the beginning stages of monumental catastrophic climate changes that will ultimately drive people away from uh, large inhabited regions of this continent of Australia. And one of the uh, rare kind of well, used to be rare weather phenomenon as we've all become kind of armchair meteorologists at this point uh, in the bushfire season are these pyrocumor nimbus events, Very which well are said. meant to be really <laughs> rare. Um, but it reminds me of something I, I know you said recently, which is this idea, we keep saying this could be the new normal, that, you know, Sydney shrouded in smoke like we see behind us, hazardous air quality, bushfires raging for months before summer has even started, is a new normal. But that suggests that we've peaked. Have we peaked? No, that's the problem. New normal is the best case scenario, which is to say if we bring our carbon emissions down dramatically as we need to, we can prevent a worsening of the problem. We can prevent further heating, worse droughts, more widespread bushfires, but we're sort of stuck with what we have now and we're going to need to contend with and adapt to this new normal as it were um, if we are able to mitigate the problem, if we are able to prevent further warming and exacerbation of drought and wildfire uh, by bringing down our carbon emissions. Now if we continue on the course that we're on, if we don't bring down our carbon emissions, if we continue with business as usual, burning of fossil fuels, including the, uh, the exporting and burning of coal, uh, as is happening here in Australia, then the continents get warmer, the drought gets worse, the, the bushfires uh, expand in scale and intensity, and they spread even faster. And one of the real problems with these bushfires is they are so fast spreading that it's very difficult for people to get out of harm's way, and, and much of the tragedy we've seen is a result of that. If the Australian government was so inclined to listen to you, what would you say they need to do right now? 
Well, they need to uh, put a price on carbon. Um, and we had that here in Australia, but unfortunately, uh, the liberal government got rid of it. Um, in the first nine months after the, the, uh, the price on carbon, uh, the emissions trading scheme was uh, imposed, we saw a nearly 10% reduction in carbon emissions. So this works. It worked. They revoked it. We saw carbon emissions spike. Um, as soon as they revoked the, the, the um, emissions trading scheme. And so we need to implement that again. We need to put a price on carbon. We need to provide incentives for renewable energy. This is a continent. It's got a lot of wind. It's got a lot of sun. Well, when you don't have the smoke anyways. And uh, it, uh, you know, Australia needs to take advantage of the amazing renewable energy uh, options that it has and get off fossil fuels. How do we stop climate change or progress the discussion around climate change from being a generational issue or a political issue? Is that possible? Well, it is fundamentally. Um, it's a generational issue in a sense, but in another sense it's not. I mean, yes, our children are the ones who are going to bear the brunt, uh, the worst impacts of climate change if we don't act now. But we all care about our children and grandchildren. We should want to leave behind um, a habitable planet for, for them and future generations. And so it's really about all of us. And these kids have been out there um, demonstrating, striking against school, trying to raise awareness. We need to have their backs. We need to make sure that they're not out there alone, that, that we're all working to, to make the changes we need to make.